hello guys so here and welcome to another episode of our 30 day video challenge in today's video we are going to look at gap analysis and we're going to look at one of our template for conducting gap analysis before we even get into that i just want to find out what is gap analysis and how is that different from audits put your answers in the comment section and just do all to subscribe to our channel or follow us because you have a lot of amazing content all right so when it comes to gap analysis what is it all about so basically um, there's an important ehs activity that i carry out an initial phase of developing a management system so if you're health and safety professional or a consultant before you set out to develop a management system or upgrade a management system the first thing you do is a gap analysis on the management system because you cannot assume that there's nothing in place there has to be something in place and for this reason you need to do your gap analysis and moreover you're looking at a certain standard it could be a standard criteria which you're looking to meet or benchmark the management system to and for this reason you need to do your gap analysis so what is gap analysis at all this is actually the review of the current management system against a standard criteria with the purpose of identifying gaps and the level of implementation of the standard criteria in order to implement improvement actions all right so that at the end of the day you're able to bridge the management system in accordance with the standard criteria that you set up now that's quite different from audits all right so audits on the other hand is about the review of the current management system in accordance with the standard criteria with the purpose of identifying the deviation or non-conformance opportunity for improvement including the level of compliance against the standard criteria and at the end of the day you're looking to implement corrective and preventive actions to ensure continual improvement with that said let us head straight onto our site to look at one unique template, all right? As I earlier mentioned, we have um, various gap analysis tools on various standards, but we're gonna be focused on health and safety gap analysis. Now, why are we talking about health and safety gap analysis and not ISO 45001? The big fact is that not all organizations subscribe to the ISO standard. Now, take note, ISO is an international standard. However, there are also national standards that organizations can subscribe to. In fact, countries that have very robust health and safety legal regime with good support from enforcement authorities, they have national standards for what health and safety management system has to be and what organizations must comply with. So this is basically a generic template Plates, but users have the option to actually change their standard criteria so we're just going to get straight into it so this is the template which we are using to do gap analysis and as i've earlier mentioned we are looking to identify gaps in the system so we have a very nice structure and then we are trying to ensure that whatever you're doing you're able to adequately report on it so gap analysis and activity we want to ensure that you're able to adequately report on the gap analysis all right so we have the table of contents which we are using to give an overview of what the template is all about the structure right so we have an approved list we have a gap analysis scoring criteria we have health and safety analysis checklist so this is where you have the standard criteria we have various reports so these reports start from the fact that we are giving a summary of the analysis that have been done we are also providing a template for implement and improvement action following the gaps that you've identified there is a dashboard and we have other reports like health and safety implementation reports the scores and the gaps that have been identified the gap analysis findings the subsection percentage implementation and action status whether open or close all right so there's the table of content and it just helps in easy navigation all right now we have the approved list on the approved list we are giving you opportunity to do some routes cost analysis or providing root causes to the gaps because it is actually important that once you identify gaps in a system you want to find out why are there gaps and then you can actually come up with improvement action if you don't do some root cause analysis how would you be how are you able to you know conclude that this is actually the best recommendation to addressing the gap that you identify so gap analysis and even auditing you need to do root cause analysis so this template is just for you to provide root causes for the gaps that you identify all right so we have this section that is just helping us to provide a long list of root causes which we've actually done that for you but you can actually add on it where applicable all right so here we have action priority high medium and low we have action status whether open or close because we're going to utilize them in the template now over here is the gap analysis scoring criteria and basically when it comes to gap analysis we are looking to determine the absence or presence of um, processes or documented information as required by the standard criteria all right so 
the presence or absence. If it is present, fair enough, that means that it has been implemented. If it is not present, that means that it's not in existence and it's not being implemented and there's no documentary evidence to support it, right? So yes, simply means that the standard requirement has been implemented. It can be verified by available documented information or established process, whereas no means that the standard requirement has not been implemented. It cannot be verified with any documented information or established process. So that's pretty much the scoring criteria for gap analysis. When it comes to auditing, that is quite different, all right? Now, this is where we are looking at the standard criteria, all right? Now, take notes that when it comes to standard criteria for a management system, it depends on the national standard because there are national standards and then there are international standards. As I earlier mentioned, not everyone subscribes to the ISO standard, so your country could have a unique national standard for health and safety management system. And you can probably change these standard criteria to, to fit your national standard criteria, all right? So this just based on an acceptable criteria that we found on the internet, which covers the entire scope of a management system, all right? So we are looking at policy and organization. We are looking at um, health and safety training. We are looking at risk assessment. We are looking at monitoring of the management system. We are looking at workplace equipment, accident reporting, fire and emergency, contractor control, site inspection, occupational health, and claim defensibility. All right? So this actually is very, very broad in as much as you are not looking at an ISO standard. This actually looks very perfect. It covers the entire scope of a management system. And if organizations are able to meet this criteria, their management system is going to be robust enough. All right? Because each of the sections come with a set of questions, like regarding policy and organization, does health and safety policy statement exist? Does a health and safety policy state policy exist containing arrangement and responsibility? Is a policy signed, dated, periodically updated, and being communicated to all? So this is supposed to be supported by documented information or an established process, all right? So these are documents, right? So if it is present, you indicate as present. If it is not present, you indicate as no. All right. So that's pretty much how you respond to um, the criteria. And once you are done with responding to the criteria, based on what is verifiable at the workplace, with document to support or with process to support, all the findings are going to be transferred here as reports. So this section is a summary of the analysis that you've done, I mean, with the outcome of your assessment. This is a summary. So it's going to count the number of scores for each of the sections and subsections, all right? So you have the main section, you have the subsection here, and this is pretty much just a report. This section populates automatically. So you have the score and the gaps for each of the questions. You have a score and the gaps, all right? And then again, it's going to estimate the percentage implementation of the standard criteria all right and then it's going to give us a um, benchmark it against the target which is 100 percent so each of the level of implementation is basically talking about the fact that we are we have a total of a number of questions related to this section but some of them have been scored as yes some of them have been scored as no because there's a gap and it strikes the percentage of the scored over the total right it gives us a percent that's pretty much it right so that's basically what this section does now, the interesting thing is that every time you indicate no, you get transferred here automatically. And then you have to provide the root cause. The root cause is selected from the drop down list right here. And then you provide the action that is needed. All right. So we're talking about improvement action plan. Here's an improvement action plan. So, whatever the gap is, for example, does the health and safety policy statement exist? All of this populates automatically, right? Based on the no that you provided. All right. So, why is there no policy statement? There's poor safety leadership. Leadership has not demonstrated a commitment to safety, right? And then, what is the action needed? Provide a health and safety policy statement. Who is responsible? HSC manager. What is the target date? You set a target date, and the date is going to be count, counted for you if the action is open, right? If the action is open, it's going to track for you automatically. But we've closed the action, so it's going to indicate blank right and then here's for action priority so this section is basically for tracking the improvement action to ensure that you're able to close the gap right now here's the dashboard this dashboard is very very interesting 
It's very dynamic based on the information that we are gathering in this summary sheet, right? And then again, based on the information we have here. So this is giving us opportunity to adequately report on our gap analysis that we've done for the company, right? So how many gaps have we been able to establish? We've established 4% gap in the management system. And they've implemented 96% of the standard criteria. That is very, very good. So with a company like this, you have a very little work to do in terms of improving the management system to the standard criteria that we are using, right? So that's how interesting this is, okay? So um, this section is very dynamic. You can actually drill down to each of the, you know, the subsection of the management system. And then you can actually click here to filter I mean, to clear the filter, to have an overview of exactly what it is, all right? So this is an, a gap. This section is for gap. This section is for the, the health and safety gaps and scores, all right? So the gaps will be counted. The scores will be counted. This is a level of implementation of each of the standard, the sections of the standard criteria. This is a percentage score of indicating the level of implementation. This is the number of gaps. This is the number of um, criteria that have been implemented as per the questions, right? And these are all the reports. Take note that these are the reports that we used for the dashboard. So this section is looking at percentage implementation from each of the for each of the sections. This section is looking at the, the count of the gaps in the, in the scores, right? That's here. And then again, how many of what is the total score? What is the total gaps? And then this section is a percentage implementation of each of the subsections. And this section is for the action status, whether open or closed. So the action status is actually based on um, whatever is here. So let me just refresh the workbook. Okay, the workbook. Now it tells us we have just eight action that's open, right? So just take note that sometimes you just want to make sure that you have a full overview of the Excel sheet and you know what is hidden and what is not hidden. This is a simple filter that you used. You clear the filter to know that everything is properly aligned, all right? Now let me just show you something. Before you start using this template, you just have to make sure that you delete all these responses. So you will, we will delete all these responses. Okay. Once you start deleting these responses, everything starts becoming blank. All right. Now let's look at, okay, let, let me just take my time to delete. In fact, it's a lot of questions going all the way down. Uh, okay. We can try and delete. Let's try and delete. Um. Unfortunately, we are exceeding. No, I don't want to delete. Let's try to delete some of them. Now, let's refresh the workbook. You, you see, it changes, right? Um, and it has gotten rid of some of the entries here. So let us start from the from the top. Okay. Once you indicate no, no, then it get populated on the action plan. That's right there, no. Okay. So if all of them happens to be no. Okay, then it's gonna indicate on the on, on the action plan sheet right here. So once we refresh all, it's gonna tell us the score, the score changes, okay. So that's basically what this template is all about. It is giving us opportunity to actually report on the gaps and determine the level of implementation. And then we have an improvement action that we're gonna to use to do a follow-up until all the actions are closed. And then we have a dashboard that gives us graphical representation of the, the gap analysis performance, actually. So this is based on plan, do, check, act cycle. You're able to improve continuously that organization's gap has been closed adequately and you have a document to support it, you have a report to support it. You can come up with a very nice report, you know, on your gap analysis report to look very, very good to your top management, all right? So thank you all for attention. In case you're interested in this template, all you need to do is just click on this link, come to the gap analysis, you know, page, and you can actually drill down to have a good look about the, the, the template, all right? Thank you all for attention and see you again soon in another video. Bye for now.